Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about emergency cricothyrotomy. We're going to be using the H&H &H emergency cricothyrotomy kit. And first we're going to talk about when you would need to do this. You're going to need to do this when you have a total airway obstruction that's not relieved by other means. When you have severe trauma and it's compromising the airway or any other reason that you may have the inability to ventilate, intubate, or use a superglottic airway. The equipment that we have here, like I said, is the H&H &H Emergency Cricothyrotomy Kit. It has a three-year sterility shelf life, and its contents include a number 10 scalpel, a shortened 6.0 tube that's engineered with a flange, and a cotton securement strap, a 10 to 12 cc syringe, a 35 centimeter bougie, a news tracheal hook, and curved Kelly forceps for clamping and spreading tissue. So for the procedure, we're gonna to need to make sure you're wearing gloves and eye protection. You're gonna then prepare your equipment so you'll open up the packaging and make sure everything is ready to go. Check your cuff on your tube, secure your syringe to the tube, lubricate the tube, pull the safety mechanisms off of the hook and the Kelly forceps. Make sure the Kelly forceps are open. Make sure you have suction standing by. All of your preparation equipment, such as uh, the cleaning device, some gauze, the lubrication, bag valve mask, and end tidal CO2. So after your equipment is prepared, you then are gonna identify the landmarks uh, on the, the patient. You're gonna do that by finding the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid ring and then in between there, you'll find the cricoid membrane. At that point, you'll use whatever preparation equipment you may need, what type of uh, cleansing you would need for your area. In this case, I'm going to use the chloroprep. You clean your site, clean your finger, and then you'll want to identify the landmarks again. Measure twice, cut once. You'll use your 10 blade scalpel and make a two to three centimeter vertical incision. And then a two, one and a half to two centimeter horizontal incision through the cricoid membrane. At this point, you may need to use your gauze or the Kelly forceps to stop any bleeding. And then at that point, you will put the hook into the hole. You gotta also remember that during this process, if the patient's still trying to breathe, their trachea may be moving around and they may be starting to fight you a little bit. At this point, again, you may need to suction any part of the airway and then start to introduce your bougie. As you introduce the bougie, you want to feel for cricoid uh, rings. Make sure that you don't see it tenting underneath the skin. And you're going to push until you actually meet resistance at the carina. Get the tube as close to the skin as you can. Remove the hook so you don't damage the cuff. And then introduce the tube the rest of the way in. You can then remove the bougie and add the air to the cuff. You'll use your bag valve mask with end tidal CO2 on it. Ventilate, listen to lung sounds, check your end tidal CO2. Pass off your BVM to a partner and secure the device around the person's neck. 